I have two topics for this message this morning. For the elites, for the conservative, the topic is the battle for positions. But for the rest of us, help me tell your neighbor, I'm a high stepper. I'm a high stepper. Tell three people, I am a high stepper. I'm a high stepper. I'm a high stepper. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Where are the elites? Where, where are the conservatives? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now, if you, if you watch, if you pay attention to that scripture, you find something there. He said, the steps of a good man. The first thing there is the word good man. And I did a study and I found out there is nothing called good man in the original text. He says, the steps of a hero. That's the literal translation. The steps of a hero or the steps of a victorious man. Or if you like, better still, another word that was used is the step of a conqueror. So what he's saying is that the steps of a conqueror, they are ordered. The steps of a hero, they are ordered by the Lord. In other words, you can never, even the hero will not get to where he got to without God's involvement. Oh, are you still hearing me here now? Somebody give God two hallelujahs this morning. The steps of a victorious man. Is there anybody who is, a, who is, who, who is, who is anticipating any victory in any area of your life? Get ready for God's involvement. Are you still hearing me here? When God is involved, victory is sure. You know, there is a Latin adage which um, the, the Nigerian students have adopted. And they call it, they, they said, um, um, what, how, how do they say? Aluta continua, victoria aceta. It means, it means the struggle continues. Victory is sure. Victory doesn't come by struggle. Victory comes by God's involvement. You can struggle and still be a failure. It's not by struggle. Are you still listening to me this morning? I've seen people who struggle through life. They struggle to make everything work and it never works. It doesn't happen by struggle. How long you have been struggling does not determine victory. Now, the first thing we need to notice there is that God does not always bring things to you. God brings you to things. He brings you into something. That's why when we gather together, when we sit down with the word of God, we are being changed. We are being taken. We are being, we are being transformed into something else. And as God changes you, he lifts you up. Help me tell your neighbor, I'm a high stepper. I'm a high stepper. The Bible tells us in Revelation that there was war in heaven because of that. There was war in heaven and angel Lucifer and angel Michael started fighting. Michael with the angels who were in support of God. Lucifer with the angels who were in support of him. Oh, are you still hearing me here? And this battle was taking place in heaven. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, if there was a battle in heaven, why don't you think there should be battle on the earth? Now tell the other person, there is no battle free zone. There was no more position for him in heaven. And the Bible says, he lost that battle. Michael, because God is too big to fight. Oh, are you still hearing me here this morning? God is too big to fight his own creature. And so, and so Michael had to do the fighting. But the Bible says, Michael won. And they defeated Lucifer. And they threw him down. Out of heaven. And then he came to the earth to stay. And then I can imagine the conversation. And Lucifer said, okay, God, now you've thrown me away. Who will now worship you? And God says, who will worship me? God stooped down to the earth. Picked some dust. Man showed up. Oh, are you still hearing me here? Nobody's getting me here this morning. Man showed up. And God says, that's the new man that will take your position. That's the new worship leader. That's the new worshiper. I, I, God is looking for worshipers. God is looking for people who will take their position in the spirit as sons and daughters of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And, and Satan, Satan felt messed up. What? Ordinary dust. He got upset. And he swore to himself, I'm going to get my place back. He swore he's going to get his authority back. He swore he was going to get that influence back. 
He swore he was going to get that control back. And can I announce to you, church? Sadly, he got it from Adam. He took the authority from Adam. How did he get it? He deceived Adam. He wasn't bold enough to fight with Adam. He wasn't bold enough to do battle with Adam. Because if you do it, if you get it by battle, then it's yours. Are you still listening to me here? But he couldn't fight. That's, the devil is an intimidated devil. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't face Adam. He had to go through the backyard, through his wife. And then he tricked them. And somehow, through tricks, anyone who is in politics and is doing tricks, he is of his father. I don't, his father, DD. Somebody say DD party. Now, he went through the back and, and, and he changed the polls. He rigged the election. Through deception, he secured the power and the position. Now, let me show you something. Come, can you follow me? Let me show you something. Through deception, he swapped over. This man was supposed to be in authority. Through deception, he took the position of authority on the earth. And Satan, from that day, follow me, became the authority on the earth. He became the influence. He became the man of power on the earth. He was in charge. Dominion was transferred to him. The same dominion that God gave Adam and God says, have dominion. That dominion was taken by Satan through criminal deceit. And then Satan was in charge. For 4,000 years, man was behind Satan. And then all of a sudden, oh, help me, sir, sorry, sir. All of a sudden, Jesus, as Satan was coming, he was in charge. God said, before you get this Adam out of control, before you get this Adam to destruction, the place where you are, God said, I'll bring another Adam. And God bring another Adam to correct what the first Adam messed up. And that Adam is called the last Adam. And his name is Jesus Christ. Are you still listening to me this morning? When Jesus Christ showed up for about 4,000 years, Jesus showed up. And when he showed up, the Bible says he went to the cross and died. And Satan said, I killed the second Adam. But not knowing that it was a divine strategy. Oh, are you still hearing me here this morning? When he died, when Satan and his cause were still celebrating at Calvary, the death of Jesus, Jesus left Calvary and went straight to the domain of Satan. The Bible says he descended straight into hell. And for three days, single-handedly, without an angel beside him, he defeated all the demons and the... Oh my God, somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says... He, he, he took captivity captive and having, having spoiled principalities and powers he dealt with all of them alone and then he went ahead and went to take the key the key that Satan stole he took the authority he took the dominion back and when he brought it back he came back here and while Satan still thought he was in charge Jesus showed up. And when Jesus showed up, Jesus dealt with him and showed him the authority that he now had. He said, all power has been given to me. Somebody shout yes! And I thought Jesus was going to be the new man. Jesus said no. He pushed Satan away and Jesus got hold of him. Of the same Adam and turned him around and said 4,000 years go back back church it's time to head back to Eden it's time to head back to authority head back to glory head back to honor somebody shout yes